Good day, family, and welcome all. My name is Fidel Casada, and I'm here representing E4FC, and I'll continue to be your host in this new E4U episode, where we'll be going over the California Dream Act. However, if you still haven't checked out our videos on AB540 or on DACA, you should do so now, either by clicking on this link or in the description below. We really advise you to watch those videos either now or after this video, because AB540 plays a big role into the qualifications of California Dream Act. Without further ado, let's begin. Family, the California Dream Act, a law that although a couple of years ago was depicted as something unimaginable, today is a reality. But what exactly is the California Dream Act, you may ask? Before anyone gets ahead of themselves, let me explain. The California Dream Act is a state law, yes folks, a California state law, that provides access to institutional scholarships and state-based financial aid for AB 540 eligible students. This means that it allows undocumented students that qualify for AB 540 can apply for and receive private scholarships and financial aid, funded through either public universities, state-administered financial aid, university grants, community college fee waivers, and even Cal grants. Seems like a dream come true, no? Well, let me tell you folks, it was an easy pass in this law. This law was actually a right that was fought for for many years by the group of undocumented and unafraid students across California and also by our fellow allies across the state who were not willing to accept the lack of resources and higher educational systems for undocumented people. In the end, the California Dream Act, authored by Assembly Member Gil Cedillo, was broken into two bills, AB 130 and AB 131, which were signed on June 25th and October 8th of the year 2001 respectively by the governor of California, Jerry Brown. And so the first of these two bills, AB 130, which went into effect January 1st, 2012, currently gives both colleges and universities the discretion to award institutional scholarships to undocumented students who qualify for AB 540. This includes scholarships funded through private donors, alumni contributions, and also individual department efforts, such as the UC institutional grants and individual scholarships at each CSU. AB 131, on the other hand, went into effect January 1st, 2013, and this enables eligible undocumented students to actually receive state-based financial aid. Yes, that same financial that you thought you were gonna miss out because you couldn't fill out the FAFSA. This actually includes the Cal Grants, State University Grants, Chaffee Grants for Foster Youth, EOP, the Middle Class Scholarship, and Community College BOG fee waivers, just to mention some. And every different financial aid plan will vary, depending on individual need and also on the program. And remember folks, all the money granted by the California Dream Act, such as the grants or the scholarships, it's just like the money that your padrinos gave you every domingo, meaning it's free money but for school. This means that you don't have to pay it back. Loans you do have to pay back and usually with very high interest, meaning that should be your last resort. And so by now you should be asking yourself, how can I apply for the California Dream Act? Pues ale va chiquitos. First, as mentioned before, you must be categorized as an AB540 student. You can do this by meeting the separate requisites by AB540 and you can check out the requisites in our past videos and by submitting an affidavit at the school that you'll be attending. Second, you must fall under the categories of either an undocumented student, a student with a U visa, or a recipient of DACA. And as expected, you are not required to have a social security number in order to apply for the California Dream Act. However, if you did obtain a social security number from DACA, you are welcome to input it into your application. They will simply help the university keep a further record. However, your information will always be lawfully guarded by FERPA. And if you want to know more about FERPA, you can check out our past videos. It's also safe to mention that if you hold a T visa, you should be applying for FAFSA, not the California Dream Act. And the same goes for the permanent residents and U.S. citizens, even if you're technically an AB540 student. Once that you are sure that the California Dream Act is right for you, be sure to fill out and turn in your application online before March 2nd. Let me say that again, March 2nd. Yes, that's the same deadline as the FAFSA application and also the Cal Grants deadline. Remember that date, folks. You want to make sure you have priority. This is not an endless pit of money we got here. It's not like we have the U.S. military budget here. As mentioned before, you can fill out the California Dream Act online by visiting the CSEC website, which we'll have in the description below. Here, you'll be able to fill out your application, which is actually directly based on FAFSA. And they always have guides on the sides of the application in case you have any questions. Uh, other than that, our website, E4FC, always offers guidance to how to fill out the California Dream Act and any other application for undocumented community. When filling out the California Dream Act, however, there is one extra step if you're a male between the ages of 18 and 25. You will be required to register under Selective Services and provide proof that you did it to your school. Although technically undocumented people are not allowed to be serving under the U.S. Forces. This is so you're able to receive financial aid. However, one must never be afraid to accept this term. By doing this, 
you are actually accepted to be put into a draft that doesn't exist. The U.S. actually still remains as an all-volunteer military. So, in case of a war, God forbid, you will only be notified but never forced to join the fight. Once you have submitted your application, the process does not end there. You want to make sure that you actually get your money. Once of many, you have to make sure that you turn in your non-SSN GPA verification at the school that you'll be attending. Which by the way, is also due on March 2nd. And you have to make sure that you're enrolled at least in half time during school. And I'm sorry, financial aid staff, but family, go bother the financial aid offices until you're sure that you have your money. You have to make sure that they've received all your documents or in case they need you to fill in anything else. And always remember to check both your email and your portal for any other information. Lastly, we wanted to emphasize on what the California Dream Act really is because it's usually uh, confused with both the past federal DREAM Act that never went through and how it differentiates from DACA, since these two are often confused. Hey, Vale, what you up to? Hey, Fide, what's up? I'm just here filling out my California DREAM Act application because mm -hmm. it's almost March 2nd. Oh, and you're almost done? Yeah, I just need my parents to sign this and then I'll soon I'll be able to go to college and have protection for deportation, be able to work legally, and I'm going to go to Mexico. Wait, wait, Vale, the California DREAM Act can't do all of that. What do you mean? It's the California Dream Act for dreamers like me. No, no, yeah, yeah, but I think you're getting the California Dream Act and DACA a little mixed up. Wait, so you're saying I can't work? How am I going to get my daily dose of churros? Am I going to get deported? Wait, wait, wait. No one's going to deport you. You eat a churro every day. It's my special treat. Oh, no wonder you're almost smi always smiling, but vale, vale. Don't worry, you, you, you can get all of those things and many more things, but not just with California Dream Act. So you're saying the California Dream Act will help me get financial aid for school, but yeah. VACA... DACA. DACA will help me with protection from deportation and a work permit? Yeah, yeah, that and many more things. Here, look, oh. let me show you on this website, e4fc.org. You can get all this info about a documented community. As you can see, DACA is a federal program, meaning it expands throughout the states, and it provides perks such as protection from deportation as well as a work authorization just to mention some things. The California Dream Act, on the other hand, is a state law, meaning it's only for California, and it provides its recipients with financial aid for school. In conclusion, the California Dream Act is proving to be an amazing weapon against the educational oppression of our undocumented community. Thanks to this state law, the dropout rates around the state have actually decreased, and now more talented, gifted, and capable students will have their fair share at an affordable college education. People just have to understand that this is not just an investment on the undocumented community in California. California. This is an investment on the future leaders of our country. And that was it for this video. Thank you for watching. My name is Fidel Casada and I'm here presenting E4FC. Remember to check out our future videos and also our website in the description below. Every view, thumbs up, and subscription is greatly appreciated. And before I go, I wanted to give out a huge shout out to Rodrigo Dorador, the former E4FC outreach manager, and Nancy Joe Ditas, the AB540 advisor and Dream Act coordinator at San Francisco State University. These two amazing people, mentors, and leaders of our community served as a great resource and also aid for making this humble script and continue to help change the future of our community for the good. For now, we'll see you all next time, where we'll continue to try to help and educate our community in their path to success.